Hi, welcome to another episode of Science Made Simple. I'm Farhat, and I'm a science specialist here at the Peak Lab. In this video, I'll be analyzing a past year examination question from the topic of light. I've placed the question in a handout, and you may download it for free by clicking on the link in the description box below. So let's begin. Question 5. Figure 5.1 shows the positions of three students P, Q, and R standing in front of a mirror. And we're supposed to check if student R can see the images of student P and Q in the mirror. If you get such a question in MCQ or even open-ended, where you need to do a quick check which objects can be seen in the mirror, let me teach you a shortcut method to do this. You should be practicing along with me. So if you need to pause the video to get graph or plain paper, ruler, pencil, eraser, and protractor, you can do that now. Are we ready to begin? Let's start by recapping the two important laws for reflection. The first law, the incident ray, normal, and reflected ray must lie on the same plane at the point of incidence. What is the second law? The angle of incidence must be equal to the angle of reflection. So for this plane of flat mirror, the shaded side that I've highlighted in blue, that represents the back of the mirror. So using the first law, all the rays and the normal that you should be drawing should be on the front side of the mirror. Since we need to check if P and Q can be seen by student R, first I would draw an eye at R. Should the light rays be going towards or away from the eye? It should be going towards the eye of student R. You'll be surprised how many students got these directions wrong when we use this exact question for a test. So, drawing the eye at position R is a useful tip to remind me that for student R to be able to see the reflections of P and Q, the light rays must be heading towards the eye in that direction. The second step in this shortcut method is to draw the reflected ray to the eye from both edges of the mirror. I'm going to start from the right edge of the mirror, like this. Don't forget to add the direction of the rays. You can do the same for the other edge of the mirror. Next, for the third step, I will draw the normal that is perpendicular to the surface of the mirror for both edges of the mirror. Remember to draw it dotted. Finally, we need to draw the incident ray. Can you recall what was rule number two? The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Remember, angles are measured from the normal and not from the surface of the mirror. So ideally, we need to use a protractor to measure the angles, ensuring that it's equal. But for questions where we don't need to do an accurate ray diagram, we can just ensure that the angles are as close to equal as possible. Now let's try one. If I were to draw the incident ray like this, does the angle of incidence and reflection look equal to you? No, it doesn't. So this is the best incident ray. We can do the same for the other edge of the mirror. Now what this gives us is the maximum field of view that can be observed by student R using this plane mirror. Does student P and Q fall within this field of view? Yes, they do. This allows student R to observe the images of student P and Q using this mirror, quickly giving us our answer as yes for part A. However, for part B, the question requires us to draw an accurate ray diagram, enabling R to see the images of P and Q. So we cannot use this shortcut method for part B. Similarly, I cannot just draw an incident ray from P to the mirror, followed by drawing the normal, and finally drawing the reflected ray from the mirror to student R. Even though we satisfy the first law, which is all the rays and the normal lying on the same plane at the point of incidence, it is very difficult for us to ensure that we meet the second law. Can you still recall what was that? The incident and reflected angles must be equal. So let me erase this so I can show you how to do an accurate ray diagram. Step one is to draw the image of P and Q first. Now, where should the image be? Should it be in front or behind the mirror? It should be behind the mirror. Now, what about the distance? It must be the same distance as the object is from the mirror. So if you use graph paper like me, you can just count the number of boxes. 
since P is two large boxes in front of the mirror, the image of P must be two large boxes behind the mirror. The image is usually labelled with an apostrophe. But check the question if they want you to use a specific label. However, if you use plain paper, then we need to measure the distance of the object from the front of the mirror using a ruler and make sure that the image is the same distance behind the mirror. I will also add these lines to indicate that these two are equal distances. Now that's step one. If you want to pause the video and do the same for Q, you can do that now. What is step two? Now, step two is drawing the light rays from the image of student P to the eye of student R. Now, since this image is not real, we need to draw the line behind the mirror dotted. So, what ray have we actually drawn here? Is it the reflected or the incident ray? We have drawn the reflected ray. If you want to pause the video and do the same for Q, you can do that now. Next, step three, we need to draw the normal. Remember, the normal must be perpendicular to the surface of the mirror, and it must touch both the reflected and incident rays. So we can do the same for Q. Finally, the last step is to join the incident ray from P to the mirror where the normal is. If you want to pause the video and do the same for Q, you can do that now. By using this method, we are ensuring that both angles are equal. If you don't believe me, you can pause the video and check that both angles are equal using a protractor. Remember, angles are measured from the normal and not the surface of the mirror. So this is how you draw an accurate ray diagram showing how the images of student P and Q that can be seen by student R. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you want to check out the other videos, click on the link on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I see you next time. Bye!